Well, before I even say anything, let me just say, uh, stop for a moment, scroll down just a little bit and take a look at the like to dislike ratio because I can promise you this is not going to be one of my more popular videos. Uh, if this video gets more likes than dislikes, I will be floored. I will literally shit my pants because this is not going to be a very popular topic and I feel like it, it shouldn't be, in theory, that controversial. But it is because it involves another popular YouTuber, Jimmy Dore. So, I mean, look, folks, today we are diving headfirst into a shitstorm. But I feel like I have to talk about this. And I really debated with myself whether or not this was even necessary because I don't like all of the leftist infighting that I see. And I've acknowledged that I'm kind of a hypocrite because I've contributed to it quite a bit. But at the end of the day, I, I asked myself... What is the goal of me even talking about politics? What is my goal as a leftist? And if that goal isn't to advance a leftist agenda, then what is the point of all of this? If you uh, if you actually want to move forward, then you've got to you've got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. So uh, that's what we're going to do. That's probably a bad analogy. But Jimmy Dore and I have been friends for a very long time. And I have nothing against Jimmy Dore personally. But what he's doing here genuinely is hurting the left. So with peace and love, I have to respond to what he's doing. Because I think that some things are more important than egos, than clicks. Maybe I lose some subscribers, some unfollows on Twitter. So be it. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, if I'm not advancing a leftist agenda, if we're moving backwards and not forwards, then I failed as a political commentator. And this stuff is difficult, right? Having a large platform is really, really tricky. You never really fully adjust to it. You never fully, you know, uh, come to terms with the amount of power that you have with a really popular platform. And I'm still learning to grapple with it as well. But this is so beyond the pale in terms of what is and isn't responsible for a YouTube commentator that I have to talk about it. So Jimmy says, I interviewed a member of the Boogaloo Boys. I was completely floored when he said he was pro-LGBTQ, pro-Black Lives Matter, anti-police brutality, anti-racism, anti-ICE, anti-war, WTF. And then he titles the video, Radicalized Michigan Anarchist Seeks Unity with the Left. Now, for whatever reason, every couple of years, we have to remind folks on the left that forming an alliance with fascists and the far right is not a good idea. I promise you that's not going to serve our interests. Are we allowed to talk to these people? Yes. If we challenge them, if we try to de-radicalize them so they aren't part of terrorist organizations. Now, just at face value, I see this and I think, well, if you're all of these things, why are you part of a far right movement that has literally committed acts of terror? The Boogaloo Boys were part of the effort to kidnap the governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, because she imposed COVID lockdowns, which save lives. Economically speaking, they're damaging. I can admit that because the federal government hasn't assisted states. And they don't have the pocket of the purse. But they're necessary to save lives. This is what the Boogaloo Boys are against. So, you know, it's weird to me that Jimmy Dore is someone who has advocated for a third party because... The Democratic Party is really, really difficult, if not impossible, to reform. I think that is a fine argument. But if you can't work with liberals, I promise you, you're not going to be able to work with far-right extremists such as the Boogaloo Boys. Now you're going to say, well, Mike, I mean, he says that he's pro-LGBTQ, pro-Black Lives Matter, so why can't we work with these folks? In fact, in this video, this individual uh, says that uh, he did security for Black Lives Matter. Now, I don't know about you, but if you followed the Black Lives Matter protests, especially in rural areas of the country, I know in Oregon, there were some far-right militia members who were quote-unquote doing security at these events, but they weren't protecting Black Lives Matter protesters. They were protecting property. It didn't seem like you were protecting Black Lives Matter folks as white supremacists yelled at them with bullhorns. These experiences, uh, you know, were common throughout the country. So they're going to tell you one thing, but in actuality, their motives say something different. So to take this at face value is deeply irresponsible. And I think that Owen H Higgins uh, pointed this out in a really uh, astute analogy. He says, I interviewed a scorpion. I was completely floored when he said he is pro frog, pro not stinging me, pro just getting across the river, anti drowning, WTF. Now he's, of course, referring to the scorpion and the frog analogy, where a frog and a scorpion team up to get across the river, and the scorpion promises the frog that if he helps him across, 
he's not going to sting him. And then he gets across the river, and then the scorpion stings the frog. And the frog says, why would you sting me? What the hell? You said you weren't going to sting me. Well, the scorpion says, that's just what I do. We can't take these folks at face value. And if we're going to interview them, then it's important that we challenge their beliefs. Because what you could end up doing, wittingly or unwittingly, is propaganda at the behest of these extremist groups. And they know what they're doing. These folks are savvy. They know how to use social media. They use memes to win people over. And as Beth Lynch points out here, they lie about their positions in order to garner sympathy. Uh, this is from their Discord. I think publicly throwing our support both verbally and on the streets behind anti-ice people and sigh Black Lives Matter could produce a huge shift in public opinion, at least in the younger generations. So, you know, they are lying about their positions. This group is agitating towards a civil war, and either they want one, or they think that one is inevitable like it or not. And for everything that you need to know about the Boogaloo Boys, I would recommend a phenomenal video by Thought Slime, where he goes through everything that we know about the Boogaloo Boys. This is a loosely ideological organization, but the underpinnings of it are fascistic, and far right, they are extremist, and they are not folks who we can work with. In fact, if we tried to work with them and form some sort of red-brown alliance, that would hurt us because they're anti-government. If you want policies like Medicare for All, if we're truly leftists and we want reparations for black Americans, the government has to be there to facilitate that. But what these folks effectively want is no government. Anarchy, not in the traditional anarchist sense you know, contrary to popular belief. They want a failed state type of system where there is no government. And that's not what the left needs and wants. You have to understand the way that these groups function and acknowledge that working with them is completely unacceptable. And if you want to form an alliance with them, you're doing it by throwing all of your black and brown comrades and LGBTQ comrades under a bus. And sure, folks like this guy will claim to be pro-LGBTQ+, but as Thought Slime points out, this group is very strategic. They push forward their less radical members to make everyone else look better. Now, Jimmy Dore responded to criticism that he suspected he'd receive because uh, after he interviewed this guy, uh, Jerry White called him out on it, so he kind of responds to this uh, preemptively. I presume this interview that I did with this young man is going to be used to attack me. Now, if you presumed that this interview would be used to attack you, and I don't think this is an attack, I think this is a constructive critique, then why wouldn't you press him on things? Don't just let him get away with things. If he says, I'm pro-LGBTQ+, I'm pro-Black Lives Matter, I don't want a civil war, wouldn't you ask him, well, if you're all of these things... Why would you be in a far-right group like the Boogaloo Boys? Don't they seem kind of antithetical to your purported goals? Pushback. We're not trying to reach out to them. Of course, we want to uh, make working class folks realize that there are class interests that are common. But when it comes to far-right extremists, the response to them, if we're going to associate with these folks, is to try to de-radicalize them, not work with them as they are, as they, you know, are working against us. And this interview is not an endorsement of any group, because I don't know... It doesn't have to be an endorsement. It's apologia, it's propaganda. So, like it or not, they are going to use this interview as evidence that they're not as bad, because they just came on this leftist channel. So, they can't be as bad as everyone claims. How representative this person is of an entire group. Maybe do some fucking research for just once. So I, I heard him say he was. This is like Jimmy Seppi, and, and it's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> he was against the corporate takeover of our government, and he was against yeah, police just brutality. Yeah, just taking that face value. Now some people are going to switch this to say Jimmy Dore is defending Boogaloo boy racist white nationalists or whatever. I'm not doing that. I don't know about the Boogaloo boys specifically. All I know is what that guy told me. I'm talking about that guy, and so was he. So I was talking about my guest on my show who says he's in the Boogaloo Boys and he says that you have to be uh, not a racist. You have to be anti-racist to be in the Boogaloo. That's what he was saying. 
So just so you know, so I know people are going to twist this and say Jimmy is defending Boo. And Jimmy's always the victim. Jimmy's getting smeared. Jimmy Dore is being censored, even though the YouTube algorithm promotes him far more than anyone else in indie media. And it's really frustrating because Jimmy Dore knows better. He should know better. But I think that the problem as a political commentator uh, like Jimmy Dore that he's finding himself in is that he's kind of backed himself into a corner. If you almost always defend fascists and right-wingers but are constantly attacking the left, then eventually you attract a certain crowd of people. Like just a couple of weeks ago, he was ruthlessly going after Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and she is not above criticism. I think that holding her and the squad accountable is something that we should do as leftists because they have power and influence, and I think that we need to let them know that they are there to fight at the behest of the left-wing movement. That's fine. But the response that we see, you know, uh, when Trump does something bad compared to AOC... It's always downplayed by Jimmy Dore. Well, you know, Trump is a symptom of the problem. Well, are we going to talk about the actual, like, cause of the problems? Are we going to talk about capitalism and the way it corrupts both parties and all of our democratic institutions? When do we direct our ire towards the right? When do we actually try to build up our allies who we can work with on things, such as the squad? And so getting to, you know the audience that you attract. I want to go back to a video that I did. This is a video uh, that I did back in uh, 2017 about Pizzagate, where I dismissed Pizzagate. I like laughed at it because it's fucking stupid. And this was the first video where I received intense pushback. More dislikes than likes. In fact, I'll add to that. <laughs> um, and this took me off guard, right? Because I had just kind of like blown up on YouTube. We weren't even at 100,000 subscribers yet, but we were growing there, uh, growing rapidly. And so I thought, wait, I don't understand. Why are people disliking this when this is a conspiracy theory that is absolutely outrageously stupid? How could people be against this? And I actually had cognitive dissonance. I thought, well, you know what? It has to be that this video is getting brigaded, but that was unlikely because I put it up and immediately there was a lot of pushback. So what I ultimately came to the conclusion of was that I was attracting folks who believed this. I was, you know, it was the election. I was dunking on Democrats, owning the libs, attacking Hillary Clinton relentlessly. And as a leftist, we like to own the libs. This is what we do. But the problem is that Rather than actually speaking to a left-wing audience, I was attracting a lot of right-wingers and conspiratorial folks, and they found my channel, and they thought that I was one of them. And so they rebelled against me when I went against their narrative. Now, at this point, it was kind of a crossroads for me. What do I do, right? You know, I, I of course, have to uh, own the libs and attack the Democratic Party, because they are part of the problem. They are, you know, impediments to progress. So I, I have to criticize them. So how do I do this in a way that doesn't make me seem as if I am aligned with right-wingers? How do I actually change their minds? And the way that you do this is you take every single video that you do and try to embed it with, you know, a, a structural critique. Try to embed it with a structural critique. And that's, why can't I say that fucking word? Uh, embed it with a structural critique and, you know, try to give folks a really broad picture of what's happening. And so very quickly, I started to pivot, make sure that when I talk about Democrats and I dunk on Democrats, it's not because there's this underlying implication that Republicans are better. It's because capitalism has corrupted our democratic process. Capitalism is the lowest common denominator. It's why, you know, elections have been commodified. It's why political parties have been corrupted. It's why even if we were somehow able to get a third party, that party within a matter of a decade or so would be corrupted by capitalism because capitalism is a virus. I changed the way that I talked about these things because I realized that with this platform, I wasn't being responsible enough. I was attracting folks 
And I thought, you know, maybe it's fine that right-wingers watch my channel because, you know, there's a lot of right-wingers in the country and I'm just going to be true to myself. But the problem is that I realized I wasn't actually challenging their flawed belief system. I wasn't actually challenging conservatism itself when I criticized neoliberalism. And so the overall point that I am saying here is that sometimes our audience can box us into a corner. And had I chosen to just like pander to these folks to appease them, then I would have gone down a completely different path. Because that's what would, you know, uh, give me the likes and not the dislikes. You know, it, it, my audience that I had attracted, my right wing audience that I had attracted had incentivized me to, you know, only criticize Democrats, never talk about capitalism, never talk about Republicans. And I had to make a decision there. Do I care more about having a platform and being popular or do I genuinely care about educating folks? And I hope that you guys can see that I have made an effort to deprogram right wingers, not just tell them everything that they want to hear. And so I um, I'm talking about this because when it comes to Jimmy Dore, I want him with peace and love to actually ask himself, because I'm assuming he's going to see this video. Am I contributing to the left wing movement? Who am I helping more? The enemies or my allies? And I've had an issue with Jimmy Dore not assisting left wing allies and comrades enough for quite some time. We've been friends for a while. And back in the Carlos Maza days, behind the scenes, him and I had very long conversations. And him and I, you know, disagreed about what should be done with harassment of Carlos Maza with regard to Steven Crowder. Steven Crowder should not be able to monetize hate videos. I think that it's justified for him to be demonetized. And Jimmy Dore actually came to that same conclusion, although I was the one labeled pro-censorship, but that's neither here nor there. But what I tried to do was explain to Jimmy Dore during that time that even if you disagree with Carlos Maza's assertion that you know, Steven Crowder should be deplatformed. You can disagree with that. But what we need to hear as a straight ally, as a gay man, what I want to hear is you unequivocally denounce Steven Crowder. And we had this conversation. Jimmy Dore seemed to really take what I was saying and uh, internalized it and appreciated the advice that I gave him as uh, his gay friend. And then the next Saturday on his live stream, well, what does he do? He spends like an hour, hour and a half completely bashing Carlos Maza, criticizing Carlos Maza because in his Twitter bio, it says Tucker Carlson is a white supremacist. He is a white supremacist. Um, and then just completely giving Steven Crowder a pass. And the excuse that I remember that really pissed me off was, oh, well, I don't know anything about Steven Crowder. This guy's an asshole. But you took the time to research Carlos Maza about LGBT creators, and it's miserable to have that same company helping facilitate a truly mind-melting amount of direct harassment. Really? Is this what you're complaining? It's not funny. My family sees this shit. Oh, really? Really? Your what about the families of the really? 85,000 kids that have been killed in uh, Yemen? What about those families? Really? <laughs> really? This guy, what a snowflake this fucking guy is. I'm being bullied, Carlos Maza. So in this instance, if you step back and look at the contribution that Jimmy Dore made to left discourse and the left movement, he kind of gave homophobia a pass and criticized Carlos Maza, all because he couldn't get over the fact that Carlos Maza called for deplatforming, something that Jimmy, uh, you know, disagreed with. So there was no nuance there. You can't say, well, I disagree with that, but homophobia is wrong and harassing someone using gay slurs is wrong. And so we move forward to, you know, deplatforming. Donald Trump getting deplatformed off of Twitter. Now, a lot of folks online will claim that they are pro free speech, uh, but they don't really know what free speech is. I think there's a really important conversation to be had about the influence that big tech has on our lives. And we need antitrust laws to be utilized to the fullest extent. We need to break up these platforms, nationalize them, um, if necessary, try to regulate them as public utilities. Uh, so that is a, a different conversation. But free speech does not include 
one's ability to incite a riot. And that's what Donald Trump did. And there were consequences for that, not necessarily with regard to government cracking down on him, but private corporations cracking down on him. And so a lot of folks went to bat for Donald Trump, Jimmy Dore included. They said this was a bad move. Um, and that's fine if you are principled and you agree. Um, Kyle Kalinske, I think, is the most principled person on left tube when it comes to deplatforming. But Kyle Kalinske, unlike everyone else, actually defends left wingers, speaks out when the serfs was deplatformed. The same folks who deplat who were mad that Trump got deplatformed on the basis of principle said nothing about the serfs getting a video demonetized. And when I spoke out about, you know, the serfs getting demonetized, folks use that as an example that, oh, we'll see, it comes back to bite you in the ass, you call for censorship, it's going to affect the left. Except that's correlation doesn't equal causation. And these are two very, very different things. Very different things. The serfs did not incite a riot. The serfs was covering a video about Paul Joseph Watson that was within YouTube's terms of service. And that video was uh, falsely, uh, I believe, pegged as like being pro far right or whatever. So it got taken down and it was reinstored. But the response is never to defend left wingers when they're deplatformed. It's just to use left wing deplatforming as an example that right wing deplatforming is bad. So I ask myself, and I made this point in a video that I didn't post because I don't want to like fan the flames. I don't want to like stir up controversy because that's not why I made this channel. I made this channel because I believe in leftist policies and I want to advance that agenda. And I try to censor myself if I feel as if I'm not advancing that agenda. But I made a point that I want folks to uh, listen to uh, in this unreleased video because I think it's something that we all need to ask ourselves. And I'm asking myself this question as well. I mean, podcast hosts, I think you all know who I'm talking to. I'm very, very uh, specifically talking to one segment, a cluster of podcast hosts and their viewers who all the time, it seems as if most of the time, they're always criticizing the squad, AOC, uh, but on top of that, they never criticize Republicans, never criticize Donald Trump, never criticize Fox News and OAN. It's always the left. They're always punching left. And I've got to ask myself, if all of this, if we step back and look at this and look at the uh, aggregate contribution that they are giving to the cause of leftism, it seems as if their contribution is a negative contribution. It seems as if they don't really want us to succeed. How do we actually achieve progress? Do we want to even achieve progress? It's a legitimate question. Or are we just trying to, you know, get people mad because that's what keeps them coming back watching us. That's what keeps us, you know, motivated. It's the glue that holds us together. I'm asking earnestly. I'm asking because I want to know where some people stand. And so this is something that I ask people to do earnestly, not to like make it seem as if I'm the most purest leftist because we're all human beings. We all fuck up from time to time. And I hope that Jimmy Dore does this and does some soul searching because the path that he's on is not a good path. It looks like he is following in the footsteps of Dave Rubin, where in like a year or two, we're going to see a video about him, uh, why I left the left. I mean, the problem is that you can't just like continually throw a grenade in leftist circles and then expect us to see you as an ally. When it comes to the force the vote thing, I was on board with Jimmy Dore's plan to force the vote for Medicare for All. I still think that was a good idea. I'm disappointed that that, uh, that plan did not come to fruition. But I was really taken aback when I saw Jimmy Dore use my support of force the vote to like bash AOC. Even humanist support turned against you in a viral video that we all saw. No, I didn't turn against her. I would like her to utilize this strategy. Uh, but if she disagrees with this strategy, that doesn't make her a sellout. It doesn't mean that she doesn't support Medicare for all. Um, but Jimmy Dore chose to burn bridges with allies and chose to perpetuate this idea that anyone who disagrees with um, forcing the vote, they must be against Medicare for all. When this is the same individual who endorsed Tulsi Gabbard 
and gave her a softball interview when she moved away from Medicare for All, saying, oh, well, you know what? She is being really strategically savvy here because, you know, if we don't get rid of private insurance, which is key to the success of Medicare for All, because those capitalist forces are like a virus that will eat away at our single payer system. But nonetheless, if he said, basically, if we don't get rid of private insurance, then we're kind of defanging the Republican argument. Well, you know how we completely like escape criticism from Republicans? Just do what they want. Like, that's not the point of fighting for policy. So, like, I'm not saying that Jimmy Dore isn't a fighter of Medicare for all. But where was he when we needed him? When I criticized Tulsi Gabbard for moving away from Medicare for all and was called a sellout because I criticized Tulsi Gabbard, who has truly gone mask off and shown her true colors. You know, so it's really frustrating because I feel like leftist discourse right now is really fucked up. And you have a split due to what may be irreconcilable differences. I don't know. But here's what I'm going to say. I will never align with fascists. No solidarity with the, with the far right. No solidarity with fascists. And if your collective contribution to the left and left discourse is to more often than not assist and defend the right more so than leftist comrades and allies, then either you are wittingly or unwittingly working against the interests of of the left and it's time to do some soul searching and i hope that jimmy Dore does some soul searching and acknowledges that this ain't it this isn't it i care about these things and if saying this like makes me unpopular on the left which it won't because true leftists don't believe we should align with fascists but if saying this like makes me lose subscribers I don't give a shit. I care more about the movement and the policies that I want, like Medicare for All, ending wars, Black Lives Matter, Black liberation, LGBTQ+, trans rights. I care more about all of that than this dumbass YouTube channel. I'm going to use this platform as long as I possibly can to promote good, to promote leftist ideas. But every once in a while, you know, maybe we, we don't do a good job and we've got to recalibrate. Maybe we attract folks who think that we are meaning things that we don't mean. Maybe we attract right-wingers if we never actually criticize the right-wing and only dunk on Democrats and own the libs. All I'm saying is that this is, I think, a turning point in leftist discourse online. And we're kind of a niche little thing. But still, you know, this... This shouldn't be a thing that we have to revisit every couple of years. Of course, we can't work with with fascists. Of course, we can't work with far-right terrorist organizations. We should be trying to help our allies, not the people who are against our existence. So I'll leave that there. I feel like I was rambling and didn't make a lot of sense throughout the course of this. My thoughts are kind of scrambled, but uh, I just felt like I needed to speak out and get myself on the record because I genuinely believe that years from now we'll look back at this moment as a turning point. And either Jimmy Dore is going to be more responsible with a gigantic platform that he has and actually try to do a good job and promote leftism and not attack the left constantly. Or, you know, he'll be doing some PragerU videos, you know, going on Dave Rubin's show talking about why the left is terrible. So, yeah, that's it.